So when will SpaceX's fifth Starship test flight finally take place? Now, after a series of successes and setbacks, SpaceX is moving closer to the launch of the fifth integrated flight test, IFT-5, of Starship. Now, recently, SpaceX secured approval from the Federal Communications Commission, or the FCC, although it still awaits the more critical green light from the Federal Aviation Administration. And with each of the four earlier tests, refining the vehicle's capabilities and outcomes, SpaceX is on track to land a booster by the end of the year. Now, the fourth flight, known as IFT-4, was the most successful to date. With a successful propulsion splash landing of the booster in the ship, this is a crucial step for IFT-5, where they may catch the booster back at the launch site of Starbase. Back in July, Elon Musk hinted that IFT-5 would likely occur in early August. However, that didn't happen, and it became evident that the launch date is contingent on the FAA's approval. And while the FCC's authorization is a crucial step forward, the FAA's decision remains the final hurdle before the test flight can proceed. Now, the FAA's role is particularly significant due to the responsibility for ensuring the safety and regulatory compliance of all space launches within the United States. Now, the previous four test flights, although not all were completed successes, provided valuable data that has informed subsequent developments. The first two test flights, IFT-1 and also IFT-2, were labeled as successes by SpaceX and achieved critical test objectives. The third flight, IFT-3, marked the turning point, being recognized as SpaceX's first successful Starship test. Now, one of the key innovations being tested in upcoming flights is the so-called tower catch maneuver. This involves using the launch pad's tower arms to catch the super heavy booster, which is risky, but it's potentially game-changing as well. And if successful, it would enhance the reusability of Starship. They could catch the, uh, the booster back at the tower. And SpaceX has been preparing for this by conducting extensive tests, including simulations using a section of a Starship rocket booster. Now, SpaceX first began testing the tower arms, also known as chopsticks, back in June, and the initial tests were focused on ensuring that the arms could properly align and secure the booster upon its return. However, these tests revealed the need for adjustments, leading to the replacement of one of the tower arms, and after this modification, testing slowed as the focus shifted to the second stage of Starship. But the tests resumed in earnest as the launch date approached. The tower catch is a departure from recovery methods used in previous flights, where the booster in the second stage were allowed to splash down in the ocean. IFT-4 was the first test to achieve a soft water landing for both the booster and the second stage, marking a step towards SpaceX's goal of full rocket reusability. Now, they're aiming to eventually bring down both stages back to the launch site, which could happen as early, maybe, probably not, the sixth test flight. That's more like a booster thing, but maybe sometime this year. And their development strategy is rigorous. They test the second stage engines, particularly in preparation for in-orbit operations. And while the vehicle has been launched four times, the task of in-space engine ignition has yet to be fully demonstrated. IFT-5 could provide the first opportunity for this test. Now, leading up to the fifth test, SpaceX has conducted multiple static fire tests of the second stage Raptor engines. The tests are critical for ensuring the reliability and the performance of the engines under the extreme conditions of spaceflight. The Raptors, which are designed to be reusable, are the most powerful engines ever flown. Now, the second stage of Starship has also undergone extensive modifications since the last flight. Following IFT-4, SpaceX replaced thousands of heat shield tiles on the vehicle. It was necessary because the tiles weren't applied properly. Now, the tile application led to a fire on the rocket's forward flap. Now, the modifications to the second stage are part of SpaceX's efforts to enhance the durability and the reusability of its rockets. The heat shield in particular is a critical component for protecting the ship during re-entry. And if successful, the changes could pave the way for more frequent and reliable flights if they can nail this. 
Now, another major focus for SpaceX has been the development of the Raptor engine, of course, specifically the Raptor 3 variant. The engine is a significant upgrade, taking everything from the outside and kind of putting it on the inside of the engine. Uh, simplified design, key issues encountered during earlier tests showed that it's better when things are inside. And the Raptor 3 is also lighter and more powerful, which could translate into better performance and lower costs for future missions. Now, the testing of Raptor 3 is part of SpaceX's continually improvement strategy for its hardware. They are into rapid iteration and reusability and also testing, and they make significant advancements every time they fly one of these things. And by identifying and addressing issues early, SpaceX ensures that its rockets are not only capable of reaching space, but also returning safely to be reused as Starbase. Now, we don't know when test flight five is going to happen with recent statements from Elon suggesting the launch could occur sometime in September. Now, the delay is likely due to the complexity of the new uh, recovery maneuver and the additional scrutiny from the FAA, which is responsible for overseeing the safety of this flight. Now, while SpaceX waits for the FAA, it continues to test and refine its systems. The company conducted several tests of the tower arms already, including simulations of the catch maneuver with the booster part. These tests are crucial for ensuring that the arms can actually work as expected during the actual flight. That is, any failure could result in significant damage to the rocket and also the surrounding area and the launch pad too. It's critical not only for SpaceX's Starship program, but for the company's ambitions to move us from the Earth to the moon and then eventually to Mars. And this is going to be the vehicle that does that. If we get this right, we could possibly send people to the moon on a starship, also take them to Mars on a starship, and possibly, who knows, maybe to the outer solar system um, in the future. So the success of IFT-5 and subsequent flights will be key in determining the feasibility of these plans. They're on the verge of conducting the fifth flight. There's a possibility that they could get this done within the next month-ish if everything goes well with the FAA. Now, this is a complex maneuver we're talking about here. The return to the launch site is absolutely a key for SpaceX going forward. And if they can nail this booster landing, oh man, everything is going to change for spaceflight. SpaceX is going to continue to build the Starships at Starbase as fast as possible. So if IFT-5 doesn't work out, IFT-6 uh, may do the same thing. They may have the same return to base um, uh, mission that IFT-5 has. And if that doesn't work, they'll do it for IFT-7. And soon enough, the next iteration of Starship will be available. The taller Starship, more powerful, sleeker, um, can hold more fuel, has more thrust, etc. So what they do with this first round of Starships is going to make the next round of Starship test flights even better. Because what we see now isn't the end game. What we see now, they're just testing this thing. It's a, it's a beta, you know? In the software world, we would just have a beta. This is kind of an alpha, actually, because they have they've proven it enough that it works, but it's not a hundred percent. And I wouldn't even consider this a beta yet. This is still an alpha mode. So when they get to IFT eight, IFT nine, if they can return to the land, the lander, uh, the landing site slash launch site at Starbase, uh, it's going to be a game changer for everything. Humans will eventually get to Mars, um, and this rocket could possibly be the one that does that. Let's see. I don't know. It's going to be an incredible ride. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. If you've been listening and watching this whole time, please give this video a like, and also leave a comment. Leave a little rocket emoji in the comments. Let me know if you think the FAA is going to hold back Starship, or if they're going to continue on this trajectory. And just keep building these things while they're waiting for the FAA. Or will they skip IFT-5 and go to IFT-7? I don't know. It depends on the FAA, really. Or will they uh, just not do a landing next time? Do a, a soft water landing again? 
that's, you know, there's a possibility there too. So I appreciate your time. Thanks everybody for taking the time out of your day today to be here with me and please take care of yourselves and each other. And I will see you in the next one. And also remember to hit the subscribe button while you're down there leaving a comment. All right. See you in the next one.